Hi everyone, it's Dr. Andrew Orr here. I'm coming uh, to you today um, on behalf of myself, but also the experts program. And today we have the lovely Mel Gregg. Welcome, Mel. Hello, can we say I'm not the expert? You need to make it clear that you're the expert. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you're an expert here. <laughs> Sometimes I like to think I am. <laughs> <laughs> so those that you that don't know Mel, which I, I highly doubt. So Mel's been a radio host, a television personality. Um, I'm, I've seen you pop up everywhere. So you're a charity campaigner. What else? You're a long-term ambassador for Endo Australia. Um, you're founder of the Troll Free Day, which is an awesome project, which my daughter loves, by the way. You're oh, a good. You're a writer and you're also involved in something that's very, very special and dear to my heart with the lovely Lisa Burling. And you will tell us a little bit more about that in a sec. Yeah, but absolutely. This, this month, as we all know, is Endo March and you've had a very sort of public journey about endometriosis. So can you tell us how it all started with you? Like, when did you get diagnosed and like, were you missed and dismissed along the way and... All the yeah, usual stuff. I think with endo sufferers, all our stories are the same, but very, very different. Mm. We all go on the same journey of what's wrong with me? Can someone please tell me? Then we hopefully get <laughs> diagnosed and then we have our first surgery and it's a, it's a knock on effect from there. So for yeah. me, I was, I think I must have been 16. When I think back, that's when I started to have really bad period pain, but it wasn't until I was about 21 and I had a lot of pain with needing to go number two. Oh, we can say poo on this one. Yeah, we can say whatever you yeah. like on this one. <laughs> and it, it, it was weird because it's, it was when it's passing through, not the actual extraction of the poo. And I'm like, this is weird. What is going on? Why does it feel like something is stabbing me? So yeah. I still had period pain, but for me, it was my bowel that stood out the most in terms of pain. And I went to the doctor and um, I was diagnosed with endometriosis without having the surgery, the first surgery to confirm it. I was diagnosed based on my symptoms. Yep. And she said, here's the pill, this will fix it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Technically it did because I didn't feel any symptoms. What I didn't know it was, it was just masking what was going on. So Absolutely. it wasn't until I was 30 um, that we started to try for a, a baby with my husband. So I went off the pill. So I'd yeah. stayed on the pill for that whole time um, mm. and had hardly any issues at all. So when I came off the pill, oh my God, I couldn't walk. I couldn't do anything. The pain was just excruciating. Mm. Um, so that's when I had my first surgery. My first surgery was major surgery where they had to resection my bowel because of the bowel issues I had um, seven years, eight years prior, um, it had stuck to my uterus and my one of my ovaries. So they had to resect it. Um, and it was a really big operation. And they said, look, there's, there's just so much there, it's going to grow back in six months. So and it has grown back. And at the moment, it's so funny that you can't see it. Because if you were to like, have, you know, just take away this front half of me, you would see a war zone. It's just like, it's an absolute mess in there. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of easy to, to ignore it because I'm back on the pill at the moment. And I know that my next surgery will probably result in hysterectomy um, or potentially losing my ovaries. So I'm kind of just waiting to have that big finale. Yeah, it's a big one. And I think that's one of the ones where I sit down with mothers with young daughters and they say, oh, what shall we do? And I say, well, you know what, the wait and see approach is not always a great idea for you because mm. let's consider your daughter's future fertility and let's have a look that, you know, she could have her organs stuck together if you don't do anything and then it'll just get worse and worse and worse and worse. Exhibit A, that's what yes. for me. <laughs> and, you know, now I can't, you know, there's a 1% chance of me falling pregnant because it did affect my fertility so greatly. Yeah. Um, I'm nearly 40 and I had embryos, which I had to destroy in, in my divorce. So for me, I'm like that 1% isn't, isn't worth it for me. I'm just, you know, I've... I've accepted that I'm just not going to be a mother and, and that's okay. That's a part of my journey. It's not where I want it to be, but yeah. it's reality. And I think I want this to be a lesson to exactly what you've just said to younger girls. 
it's not fair that you have to think about if you want to have a family, but you do need to think about if you want to have a family. And Absolutely. then you can start doing things now to prepare for it. That's exactly right. One of the things I say to parents that uh, are a bit hesitant and want to do the wait and see approach, I say, look, do you want to be grandparents? Mm -hmm. um, and that's usually a motivator. But, you know, be, you know, besides women having endo and there is that risk factor with fertility, many do go on to have children and yeah. miracles do happen as well, which, which is do. something we um, tell women. But speaking about the war zone, <laughs> <laughs> talk about endo belly for us, Mel. <laughs> oh, endo belly. Do you know, I think that might be why I'm single because I allowed a few of those photos to go viral and guys didn't quite know how to... <laughs> <laughs> how to take what was happening because yeah. I you know you do ironically look eight months pregnant when you have an endo flare-up mm. and it's cruel because it's kind of showing you what you're going to look like pregnant but for some of us we're not going to be pregnant and that's what endo belly it's just when everything gets so inflamed and angry um there I am, eight, looking eight months pregnant. That yeah, tell us five. about this. Tell us about because this is something that I, 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 you, you're sharing that you look like eight months pregnant. And, and ironically, I was meant to do an endo event and I had to call in sick. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do a real post on social media because that's what I try and do as much as I can. I'm like, this is why I can't go to the endo event tonight because I'm having an endo flare up. And that's my endo belly. And that went um, viral across so many new signs because they're like, oh, wow, that's what it looks like. Because endometriosis is a silent illness. We can't see it. So this kind of gave people a perspective of what it can look like. And you can see that that must be painful. And it oh. was painful. And, you know, when we get those flare ups and our endo bellies are like that, it normally results in a, a trip to the emergency room to get morphine. And then you can see the, rem the remarkable difference. You know, you've probably yeah. been to the emergency, you've settled down overnight, and then your stomach's back to normal again. Yeah, it normally lasts for about 24 hours. So it it's really hard with your employer when you have to ring up and say, look, I'm having a flare up, but don't worry, it will be okay. And it should be okay in 24 hours. And they have no concept of how you can be sick one minute and be in hospital and then fine 24 hours later. But that's, that's how it is. It just flares up, gets so angry, and then it calms down once you've rested. Yeah, and this is it. And a lot of women get misdiagnosed. I see them come in, they go, I've been somewhere, or I've been to a naturopath. They said I've got food intolerances. Oh. They say I've got this and that. And I'm like, that's not food intolerances. That's yep. endo belly. <laughs> yeah, you've got IBS, you've got this. Do you, know, do you know how many people I see on social media, like influencers going, oh, I've got bloating today and I've got pain with my period. I must be... I'm like, it's endo. It's endo. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking about that, you know, where do you think we're going wrong with the whole endo thing? Like, it, because... It, it can be, like they say, it's around about seven years to diagnosis, which is too long. And look, most will be 10 years or more, like, you know, like you. Um, so where are we going wrong? Look, I'm not an expert on what kind of training our GPs get, but from the knowledge that I've learned over the years, endometriosis isn't something that they are taught. It's not a part of that initial... Um, you know, training and learning that they go through. It's a specialist field. So if you're going to a GP with any of these symptoms and they have never heard of endometriosis or certainly not had the education on it, they mm. give you the wrong advice. And it's unfortunate, but, but that's how it is. You know, someone close to me even went to um, a fertility endo specialist and they go, oh, you don't have enough symptoms. It's, it's not endo. And they're like, but both my sisters have had it. I'm sure it's endo. And they're like, no, no. Sure enough, first surgery three years later, and she had endo. And it's it's really frustrating that um, that some of our doctors are missing it. They they are getting better, and I know there's been funding into more education for GPs yeah. um, this year, I think it was, or last year. And I, I think you just need to push for it. Learn yeah. the symptoms. Speak to other people like yourself, Andrew, or seek yeah. other alternatives to help diagnose you and go arm to the doctor and go, just please give me my referral to this doctor and I'll speak to them about it. You know, you really have to take control and trust your own intuitive. You know, you, you know what's going on in your body. You can feel that something's not right. So fight for it. Yeah, I, I agree. And look, 
I think, as I say, you know, whenever I get on and talk about this subject, say, look, it's not putting GPs down or anything like that. But when they're at college, like 20 years ago, they yeah. learned about this much about reproductive and women's health. Yes. You can't, you just have to get the referral and push for the referral. Yes. And even some of our people um, that are so-called specialists don't really specialise. Um, right. Seeing an advanced trained surgeon like yourself, you saw... Who did you end up seeing for your um, surgery? Raifman was my favourite, Lionel Raifman <laughs> in Wollongong. And the he's Frenchman. Brilliant. I mean, it's not just his French accent. Like, oh, you know, come on. The ladies <laughs> love him. They nearly fall over. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's truly brilliant. I've had a few different um, surgeons throughout my life because when you move states as well, you need to try and find the right specialist. So what I would suggest is seeing someone like yourself, Andrew, yes. or even going on to the Facebook support groups and asking for recommendations on the best um, specialists in that state. And, you know, you'll get a few people and you'll see a repeat um, answer of a particular doctor. Make that your first step. Yeah. Yeah, and this is why now I've set up the experts program where we actually have people that have come on board that are experts in endometriosis and other areas. And it's, it's something that I'm passionate about too, because too many women are missed and dismissed. And it's not only yeah. the physical symptoms, but it's the psychological oh. symptom. How, 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 have you had days where you just feel like, I just want to give up? Yeah, when I, I did, but I guess I had so much other stuff going on in my life when I was finally diagnosed that it became a secondary thing and I had other battles that I had to fight through. But I have spoken to a lot of other women that have been made to feel crazy, yeah. um, just want to know what's going on. And when you have the answer and you have that relief, it's funny, you go from, you know, you don't get worse with your mental health. You're kind of relieved that you can then start seeking answers and treatments for what you have. Yeah. But not knowing what's wrong with you and being made to feel crazy, I think, is the hardest thing. But also when you're in a relationship and the partner doesn't understand uh -huh. what's going on or if your friends don't understand if you have to cancel. As an endo sufferer, you will lose people in your life. And it's sad, but you know what? The best people will stick around and it's okay to lose people because those people obviously don't understand. And when it gets too tough, they can't cut it. And you know what? Cut them. Yeah, that's exactly right. And we talk about that quite often, that sometimes your family or your extended family will come from outside your blood. Um, yes. And those people, like your soul tribe, will stick by you no matter what. No matter what you do, they'll, they'll be there 100%. Yes. And you know who a part of that soul tribe is? Fellow endo sisters. The yeah. amount of communities and um, that we've established and women reaching out for, to other women and supporting them through their endo journeys those are the special friendships that you need because those are people that you understand so join those facebook groups start discussions catch up with other people that have endo and, and make friendships that way especially at events that are being held um you'll meet someone new every time yeah and having gone through um a pain process myself and a ops myself or a different thing which is very like endo uh, people ask me, you know, how do you get up and go to work? I feel like I can't even get out of bed. I don't want to do anything. And despite your journey, you've got up, you've, you've been in radio, you've been you've, at 3 a.m. in the morning probably, um, you've, you've had media spots, you write a blog, you do everything, Mel. Everywhere I see Mel Greg turn up. So how Sorry, do you do <laughs> It's great. But so how, what would you say to someone that's sitting at home and, and feeling sorry, well, not feeling sorry for themselves, but are feeling sorry for themselves? Yeah, and that, but it is, and they are, and you need to stop. I know it's tough, but do you want to be, and I know sometimes physically you have to be in that ball on the floor. Great, that's fine, do it, because yeah. you can physically move. But when you can, still make the most of your opportunities. You know, people like Emily Seabom went on to win gold medals at the Olympics with endometriosis. Yeah. There are ways you can try and manage it and still have a fulfilled life. Um, it doesn't need to define you. It, no. it's, it 
it's it's hard. Mm -hmm. I know it's hard, but this disease does not need to define you. Still get up and find things that you can do and make the most of it because life is too short. And I know that you're fatigued, that you're in pain. And yes, those 3 a.m. wake ups, Andrew, made it even worse because I was like <laughs> a walking zombie the whole time, mm -hmm. like with endo and the wake ups. I was like, oh, get me to bed. <laughs> it was awful. But I, I want to have a life and I want to enjoy it. I chose life eight years ago when I went through something um, traumatic and I still want to just keep making the most of it and sharing our journeys. You don't have to have a profile to share your journey. No. Um, you know, I think doing something like that gives you that motivation to keep going. Absolutely it does. And that's what I say to people is that some mornings I didn't feel like getting up. There was some mornings I popped painkillers and went to work because that's just what you do. And yep. you just keep going, keep going. Yes. <laughs> one one foot in front of the other. They can be small steps, but just make the steps. That's right. And it's important to find the right people. I think we've got a lot of education out there now happening about end, things like endometriosis. Now people need to find where to go, like yes. you, which you did too, and you found really, really good people. And yes. finding that advanced trained surgeon probably helps as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The French ones, they're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, like, oh, my goodness. The Frenchman. Uh, I hope Lionel watches this. Hi, Lionel. I am going to be interviewing Lionel. Um, the okay. ladies, <laughs> ladies will love it. <laughs> now, speaking about Wollongong, where Lionel is, we've got the lovely Lisa Burling down there. And what a story she has, too, even though it's not to do with endometriosis. Yeah. Uh, you're working with Lisa on, on a kit called the Heal Better Kit. Tell me about that because post-op care is something that I find is so lacking. It's something I focus on with my patients. I give them little, yeah. you know, like a little kit and go, you need this, this and this. You need pads yeah. and you need painkillers and you need all these things that they don't even think about. So tell me about that now. Yeah, they did a survey of patients recently and nearly 50% weren't really sent home with an adequate um, recovery plan. And when I think back to my surgeries, Lionel is a, a genius. The surgery was great, no problem. But Lionel's job is to do the surgery. Lionel's job is not to get me to recovery and to get me back on my feet. He's done his job in that surgery room. So I'm then kind of passed on to the next phase. And that next phase is a script of painkillers and a wheat bag. Yeah. So we then take four weeks off work, we're lying there, not knowing, oh, when can I exercise? Is there anything I can eat? And when I heard about the Heal Better, the Heal Better kit, I looked in the pack and I'm like, what on earth is this abdominal support band? What <laughs> is the scar healing therapy that I can use to, what's this? Ex All these things after six surgeries, I never heard of. Like to think that there is something out there that can help lessen the recovery time. We can't take four weeks off work every time we need surgery. And let me tell you, the, the band, the abdominal support band that comes in the Heal Better kit, how many times have you walked out of surgery? Well, you, you could probably half relate to this. but oh, I can gonna... half relate to it. <laughs> but you hang on to your tummy like you feel everything's going to fall out. Fall out. <laughs> you want support but not too tight. And these bands are fantastic. Yeah. And I only wish I'd had it sooner. So there are other options for your recovery. Don't rely on your doctor doctor you yeah. can um you can empower yourself with the knowledge it's okay to do that and to speak to people like yourself Andrew and other um holistic approaches to recovery because they work yeah and they do and I think you, you're right here about uh often people say oh my doctor didn't do this this and this but what they don't understand is that when you come out of surgery you pass on to triage who are yes. then supposed to look after you and give you all the information and that often doesn't happen because they've got a room full of other people exactly and they might not even understand things like endometriosis they're, and they're not specialists they're, no. and and this is i didn't realize there was such a gap in the market and i guess that's why this heal better kit is doing so well especially globally this is not just a problem in australia there is a system where it's surgery painkillers wheat bag that's yes. you know there's a big missing link in there. And, you know, for anyone that is going in to get their endosurgery, the Heal Better kit, um, healbetter.com.au, get yourself one of those kits. They're not even that expensive, but it will arm you with all the knowledge you need um, and the help that you need to lessen that recovery and also your pain as well. 
Absolutely. We'll put that up after this as well, put it up in the... Thank you, because yeah. that's important for endosufferers to know, because I just wish I'd known five years ago. Now, could it help that... The, the, I, I love when you talk about the band and the support. Would that be great? Like, as a woman, would it be great for the endo belly days where you could just put it on and tighten it up a bit and walk out the door? <laughs> you know, there's no... I've tried to flatten the endo belly. you got to let that baby go. You <laughs> Undo your pants and let her out because she ain't flattening until you lie down and have a bit of a, a, a bit of a relaxing moment. So yeah, that's right. Now <laughs> I know I know you're on a tight schedule, Mel, so I won't keep too much. But what would be your top five things to tell women with endo um, and those suffering with period pain? You know that might not have been diagnosed either. Number one, and this is so important, and this is something, some knowledge that you can pass on to other people. And it's very, very simple. Bad period pain is not normal. We're expected to have an element of, you know, dullness or a little bit of a pain. But if you find yourself bending over or having to lie on the bathroom floor, it's not normal. And that's the number one sign you have endometriosis. Mm. Uh, if your family, your mom or your sisters have had um, right. some kind of back then though Andrew my mum had endometriosis and they called it chocolate cysts yeah and it was something you know she never knew she had endo so she saw me going through what I was going through and she didn't even connect the dots she didn't nope. realize that what she had is what I have so if your mum ever says oh yeah I had a bit of period pain it is a genetic um, link there Andrew isn't there where yeah there is a genetic and hereditary link yeah yeah it does go in the family so if yeah. someone in your family's got it, that is another telltale sign. Yeah. Um, thirdly, I just want to say to women, it doesn't make you less of a woman to have endometriosis. You know, it, it really got to me at some point when I realised I couldn't have children. I just felt like I'm not a real woman. You know, yeah. women are meant to have babies and, you know, it doesn't make you less of a woman. In fact, it makes you a more resilient and strong one. And endo is not your fault. There's nothing you could do to stop yourself getting endo. It doesn't matter how healthy you are. It has no. nothing to do with that. So don't ever think, oh, because I've put on a bit of weight, I've caught endo. No, yeah. that's, that's, that's not how it works. And it's not your fault and it's out of your control. Um, four, yeah. get a partner that understands. If you have a partner like I used to have that left me in the street because he was so embarrassed that I was doubled over in pain, kick that man to the curb. Get rid yeah. of him. Bye, Felicia. You don't need someone like that that doesn't understand um, the condition. And I guess five, don't, don't ever be ashamed as well to have endo, not just, you know, no. for feeling less of a woman. The more you talk about it, the better your mental health is going to be. And if you find like-minded people, you'll feel more connected and more at peace with what's happening to you. Yeah, and look, there's some good advice there just for life even. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, especially the boy part. Don't touch Yeah, him. especially the boy. Find a, <laughs> find a nice aware man that's done the work. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Mel Greg, it's been a pleasure to have you on. I know I've worked with you a few times, but haven't really got to sit down and talk to you about your journey. And hopefully yeah. um, I'll get to talk to you a bit more about that in, in depth at another time. Yes, um, only if we have wine, though. No, that's my Oh, uh, we will have wine. That's a prerequisite for the next bit, the next yes. one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll let you go. Thank you. And um, thank you for being part of Endometriosis Awareness. Thank you being uh, for an ambassador for women that have endo and also those ones that are yet to be diagnosed. And... I thank you on the half, behalf of my daughters who have endo as well. So thank you very much. <laughs> oh, thank you. And thank you for all the incredible work you do for endo sufferers. We'd be lost without you. And it's incredible to see a man embrace this and talk about it. You're one of a kind. And we all thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I love it. I just want to help women. I really do. If I can help really one, do. just yeah. one woman. It's, it's all worth it. <laughs> That's why I do it as well, just to help one other sufferer. And it's very rewarding. So, and you are, you've already surpassed that, Andrew. You've already helped more than one. So set yourself a million milestone or something. I'm going to. <laughs> We're going to cure it now. We're going yes, to cure it. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you very much, Mel Greg, and uh, good morning to you and have a beautiful day. Yes, you too. Thank you. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Bye. <laughs> Bye.